please be seated. Hallelujah. What, what a blessing it is to be in the house of God. Give somebody a high, sitting by you a high five and say, man, I can feel the Lord and I can feel you. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, before I even, before I even preach, oh, David, you're very cool. We thank God for life. All your bedrooms have been rolled away, huh? Uh, that's a good one. For some time now, I know that we've had a problem. Uh, the media is ablaze with it. Everybody's talking about it. Whether we like it or not, people are talking about it. People are talking about the collapse of the banks. Come on. Have you spoken about it? Have you discussed it with somebody? It's a national thing. I'm not here to stand for, stand against. I'm not here for that. But you see, in all the discussions, I've been, I've been listening and I've been, and I, and I want this to be recorded. It's okay. Transmit it. I'm not afraid. People are saying, hey, what's up is going to wade into trouble? No. You know, truth is one. You can't have diverse truth. Everybody's talking about the failure of a governor, the failure of, of, of governance, the failure of pastors, the failure of board, the failure of that. And in all the discussions that is taking place, there is one important people or one important personalities that they have missed. It is the workers who have been laid off. The workers who have been laid off. Do you know there are people who can't, I mean, they, they, they've been laid off. They, can't, they don't earn anything. They don't, they don't even, they, they, they can't even buy food for their family. I was told on Friday night, I had the privilege. It was a privilege for me because it was an eye opener. A young man who is a worker in one of the banks who has been laid off. And he sat with me and he started talking. We cried. We cried. Two of his, two of his colleagues are dead. Do you know people have died? One person went with his wife to a market. That's what I hear. I don't know how fast to, maybe my facts may be a little bit upside down. You know, maybe you read my page, you add or subtract some things. But guess what? Went to the market with his wife, sat down, or something like that, called his friend, that last phone call, and said, you know, I'm tired. Put his head down. There are people who can feed their families because of that. I live near Beige Capital. Uh, Beige, is that Beige Capital? Beige Bank, I live near that place. Sometimes when you see some of the workers, there's a sense of hopelessness. There's a sense of despair. There's a sense of fear. Some of them are asking the question, will I be among the 700 who will be laid off? They are asking questions. Do you know there are people right now who want to go and withdraw money from their banks? But they can't. People are, people are scared that their money is somewhere that they can't take it out. Me crowd. Oh, Jesus, help me. <laughs> don't let me go down. <laughs> they don't know. Do you know one thing? You know what? Yesterday, I, uh, on Friday night, there's a young man who is a member of this church from deputy bank manager in charge of e-banking. He's now a pork seller. He sells pork. I see you, 
to Mibdu, he stands by them. He stands by the grill. I'm not saying it's not a good job. It is. But look where he's coming from. From having two cars, one car is gone. He has to start selling things. One of them said, I have a, a, a little baby, fresh baby. Pastor, I can't buy baby food for my child. So we have to resort to local. I want to say keep on the local. Because the local is powerful. All of us were raised on the local. That's why we are paper sheets. Those who were raised on the Farex and the, this thing and the SMA, look at them, dollar dollars. Yes, Coco, Tom Brown. That's it. Equip Baby. That's it. Yeah. But some people I know that when they were kids, you know, when they don't, they'll take that big uh, cap measure, that big cap measure cylinder or whatever they call it. Then they hold the nose. Then pour. 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 When the stomach gets bloated, it up. You know what? But on a more serious matter, these are young people who came from school with a dream. We now have them there. They are now walking in town with shattered lips. Everybody is talking about it. They have been forgotten. They are the people who have been forgotten. They are the people who have been left out. And they are the people who bear the responsibilities as we speak for the foolishness of other people. This is what it is. They are crying. They are dying. Some of them are some of them are members of this church. Who is standing in them? Who is praying for them? Who is even saying sorry to them? Who is even doing that? Listen, church is not about programs. Church is about people. Our programs, people don't serve our programs. But our programs serve that's what it is. Church is not about the big buildings that we have, or the big plants that we have. It is good to have all those big buildings and big plants. But what does it profit us if our members are suffering? We are out of jobs. We are putting up mansions. We are putting up cathedrals. We are putting up all those things. You know what? Let's get our priorities straight. I want us to going to lift a prayer for every worker of all the banks who have been affected. I'm going to pray for them. I know I may come on CNN. That would be a good idea. I know that social media, listen, my heart is crying out for the workers who are being made to pay the price for the decisions of this made. Our inactions are our actions. I'm not here to say anything. I'm not here to listen. I want those people not to hear but to feel the goodness of God wherever they are. Not just works. But to feel it. I want us to lift a prayer for them. Can you help me do this? Let's pray for them. Let's pray for them. They need our help. Give me who sit you in my seat.
and pray for them. Lift them up. Wherever they are, base capital. Capital bank. Uni bank. Sovereign bank. Royal bank. Uti bank. Come on, lift them up. Lift them up. God must hold them up. Ask for divine supply. Supply. Divine supply, oh God. Lord, locate them with your supply. Supply grace. Supply grace. Supply material sustenance. Supply finances. Hold them up. Hold them up, oh God. Encourage them, oh God. Encourage them, oh God. Speak upliftment. Speak upliftment, oh God. Open doors for Open them. Open doors, oh God. Like the widow of Zarephath. Locate them. Locate them, oh God. Like Elijah. Rivers. Let them be saved. Let them be watered. Let them be saved. In the name of Jesus. Rakatalabrate Zaba. Lima sun de lebria tu zaba lekete sabra de la bayate lokete boko rakata lima sun de lebria ba supply o god in the name of jesus lima sun de lebria ba la brate kaba la sua de la bayata i atelele sanda la ba la brate la bayate in the name of jesus we thank you father in the name of jesus thank you father for this young one and old ones. Please don't let any of them die anymore. God, please find a way to supply grace in Jesus' name. Supply financial capacity, capabilities. Open doors for them. Let material support them. You don't only preach the good news while you were here, you also multiply bread. Please do so for these ones. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much. Clap for yourself and clap for them. We, want to, we just don't want to pray for them. We are not just, just a prayer, so we're not just giving them prayer support. On Sunday, next week Sunday, we're going to take an offering for some of this. The young man who is now doing the bath and for some of his people. We want to stretch out ourselves to them. Church is not only here to receive church is also here to give. We give. We give scholarships. We look after people. We send them to school. We send them abroad. I must be honest with you. We have sent people abroad today who are doing me gunti. But it's okay. All is in the name of Jesus. That's why Jesus looked at me. He wrote that scripture for me. Don't be, do not be weary of well doing. He knew it was me. But there are some people, if I were God, and God induced me with power like Superman. I would say, you are dead. True. I would just, you are know, dead. But you know, I'm not God. I don't mind them, sister. <laughs> so you know what? On Sunday, we just want to support them. I want to raise an offering for them. For Sunday, take an envelope. And then bring it and just, we just give it to them. Is there anybody here who wants to take an envelope? An envelope for them. You see now, my, I'm, English is not American. Uh, is there anybody want to take an envelope? <laughs> Please take an envelope. We're bringing something to them. I want to give you something. You know what? This is one of the things about this church. We help our members. I want you to know that. When our members are in trouble or anything like that, I remember that many years ago, there was a lady who had a very bad wound. Do you remember? And... We even took an offering and we took it in, in dollars for that, for that lady. And it was quite a huge amount of dollars for that lady. So, right, on Sunday, you know, um, mark it for the uh, um, bank, bankers. Right, bankers, when I look. 
so that the people counting it will not mistake it for a, a love offering for the church. Okay. Hallelujah. I want to give it to them. I want to tell them that we love them and we are standing with them. If you ask me to make any other comment, I don't know. I have my opinion, firm opinion, hard opinion, solid opinion, but I won't tell you. <laughs> uh, people say, don't go there. I won't go anywhere. They say, hey, hey. It's hard, though. But I have my own opinion. God also has his opinion. I'll just end there. Amen. You see, they are saying, amen, amen, amen. They want me to end there. Hallelujah. But let's help these young people. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell them church is about you and God. That's why I love you. So give me a hug. You don't want to give me a hug. Some of you ladies, there's a nice young man sitting by you. Give them a hug. Then you give them a half clutch. I hear it's called half clutch, you know, sh shoulder. Keep giving half clutch. You don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you have to open up. Open up to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe we can change the prayer topic. You never know. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and let's just worship. Open your mouth and let's Antonio Mazafoye in a direction. Divine presence, divine visitation, divine supply, divine direction. The last one which would offend you a little bit is divine challenge. The next one is divine challenge. He comes to challenge you. Divine challenge. Look at Elijah sitting somewhere Elijah in despair, depressed. You can even hear Elijah's song. Yet it, I'm alone. I'm alone. I have no friend. I have nobody. I'm alone. I'm alone. Then hear what God said. He said, listen to this. The last word after God has spoken and given his head, by the way, there are 7,000 people in your situation going through the same thing and they are not dead. So, shut up. Now you don't like that. You know what God is saying? He said, that thing which you think you are going through there are other people too who are going through it and they are still alive and they have not thrown in the towel. They are still there. So, whose heart has been broken before? Honesty is a very good thing. Whose heart has been broken? Reverend Mark with me. Whose heart has been broken before? Liars will go to hell. Oh, yes. They broke mine. Broke it nice. What is you? When they say broken heart, I thought that thing is just word so. It's not word so. It's feeling. You feel it. A bad shampoo. A bad doctor. I tell you. Yamule, you are an expert. <laughs> Guess what? Hey, I'm lying in the night. In bed. And all I was saying was, Aji, 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 Aji. And my dad woke up 
I tell my, I say, yes, that. What's wrong with you? I said, nothing. Then he said, but you are saying, Ajay. I said, hey. He said, oh, are you dreaming? I said, yes, that. Hey. But can I tell you something? God is saying, there are 7,000 who have also gone through and they are still surviving. So you are not the only person. Other people are surviving. Other people have been through it. Hey, I've told you already. I had problems. I'm going to Duncan William to pray with me. When I went there, I sat down. He started talking about his problems. Then you get a phone call. Then you say, hmm. Then, then. By the time he finished, I said, God, I thank you for mine. I thank you for mine. Hey! Look, even when he said we should pray, I knew that the man was troubled. You, when you are singing and you are putting your name inside, then it means you have trouble. You do know that. You, uh, this thing, uh, they, are, they, are, they are this thing, they are uh, and, and this thing. Let me throw, I also have to add my name. Oh, my strength, thy grace, my rule, thy way, thy way, thy way, thy glory. Hey! Other people too are going through it too. Other people too are going through it too. You are not alone, somebody. Okay. I say you are not alone. Somebody is also standing. Somebody said it's up. Somebody said I won't bow. Somebody said I won't go down. Somebody said I won't be depressed. Somebody said this is not going to take me down. You can also say, get from your chair and say, I'm not going down. Hallelujah. Come on. You better clap for yourself. Clap for the person and tell somebody, I know you are not going down. You are solid. I have an anchor that keeps my soul steadfast and sure. Oh, the beat. Oh, fast and to the rock which cannot move. Tell somebody, I'm still around. I'm still around. My head is going up. My hands are going up. My voice is going up. Something is about to happen to me. There's a breakthrough that is coming. I'm going to be like Paul and Silas. I'm not going to put my head down. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be despondent. I refuse to, to be despaired. I refuse. We cannot move. I am grounded firmly in the Savior's love. Give somebody a high five and say, if you are still standing, I, I will jump. Let's do it like that. You know, I, I went to a church in Lagos. I got born again. They were giving offering. And then somebody somebody brought a brown paper bag, big brown paper bag. Then somebody was sitting and said, ah, ah, ah. Now this fool, he bring this. Hey. Told you, give, me, give me my keys. He went to his car, opened the boot, and pulled out a suitcase and started pulling it. He pulled it and came and put it on the altar. Bam. Then look at the guy who gave the brown paper. Oh. And walk away. Tell somebody, you, you, you are standing. Mommy. Tell somebody, you, you are standing. And, and me, I'm going down. Jump from your chair. Perry Mavia. I'm still here. I'm still here. 
noche Lord supply, 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 Lord supply, Lord supply, Lord not direct. Direct to God. La branda la branda kaba. Lima sude le bria branda la ba. Lekete sa du sa ba. for a little while. Do you know that Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration something happened? The Bible said God, His Father sent Elijah and Moses to talk to him about his disease. So, the father sent Moses and Elijah to talk to Jesus about the coming tragedy, the coming accident, the coming pain, and the coming calamity. I'm wondering what Elijah and Moses will come and tell Jesus until Revelation sank in. Do you know what they came to tell Jesus? I will tell you. Moses came to tell Jesus that your father will not answer all prayers. He said there's going to be a time you will pray, your father won't show up, he won't answer. Moses, ask me why. Moses was the one when he slapped Jesus before his time. But the Bible says, speak to the rock, and he hit the rock. And the Bible says that rock was Christ. Moses was the one who slapped God before his time, to be slapped by men, by humanity. And guess what? God said, you will see the promised land, you won't enter. And Moses made it a prayer topic. He prayed that until God told him, remove this from your prayer topics. I won't answer it. So when Moses came, Moses said, Where? He told Jesus, Jesus, your father, I know you know. A time is going to come and you will pray, you will show up. But you know, don't mind him. Don't lose hope. He's still there. He's working something you don't know. 
So you know what? You take your time. He's going to work it out. So even if you don't hear him, you still have faith in him. So now when Jesus prays in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, take away this cup, take away this cup, take away this cup, take away. Then you remember what Moses told him. Then he said, okay, not my will, but your will be done. And immediately angels came. Immediately. Angels came to town to supply grace. To supply grace. Then Elijah also came there to tell him, oh boy, the guy up there, sometimes when you pray, you expect him to be, to come out with thunder and lightning and fire and lightning is not going to happen. You know what? He's still around. He's doing something I don't know. So you know what? Into your hands, I commend my spirit. I still trust you. I still trust you. You know, the challenge we have is sometimes we think we are alone. Others have been through it and they survived. It is the same God you said. You would also survive and more. Hallelujah. Somebody has been through it before. Is he a new?